it feels like with every advancement in technology, there is a poverty that we are soon to discover. Yep. But in the when the advancement hits, you don't see the poverty, and it just feels all uphill. Mm -hmm. And then only later on do you realize little things like that that were actually helpful. That were actually yeah. helpful. And, and then and then also there's the assumption, right? If students have to have their smartphones on them to check into class, well, then they've got they to have a smartphone. Have their... oh, and, and you're also training them. One of the most freeing feelings in the world is when I realize that I've forgot my cell phone somewhere. And it's just like, I can't check for a text. I I mean, even texting, right? I, I can't check for that. I can't look for this. Nobody can contact me. And it's a beautiful oh, feeling, right? It. But it's sort of like this Pavlovian experiment where we're continually by this repeated stimulus saying, you've got to have your you got to have your smartphone. You want to go to the restaurant? Scan the QR code. You want to go to a baseball game? Give us your e-ticket, right? So we are training people to pass through through the ring, right? That's absolutely what's happening with modern technology. And Tolkien saw all of it. He saw all of this happening, right? It was not the information age, but it was the machine age in his day, right? He called World War II the first great war of the machines, right? And the only people who won the war, he said, were the machines, right? The machines are stronger now. The machines are dominant. Every human being in the world is poorer and more wretched, but the machines have won. So what are the machines going to do next, right? And there's a very, very strong correlation between what the ring represents, power, domination, control, the ability to affect your will quickly, and what machines, what computers represent, right? It gives you the power without the mastery and the discipline required to get it naturally. It makes your will instantly efficacious. My mm -hmm. will is not good enough to be made instantly efficacious. My will needs limits placed on it, right? But that's that's the world that we're increasingly living under and we're going faster and faster in that direction. Mm. I usually, last few years, I've taken the whole month of August off of the internet mm -hmm. and didn't do it this month for different reasons. But um, I remember last year I took my daughter to Savannah for some reason and um, we were staying at a hotel and I needed a drive somewhere and I had to go downstairs and ask the person a number for a taxi. Yeah. And that was awkward. And then taking a taxi was really not fun at all. You know, like as much as Uber's uh, often an unpleasant experience, the taxi was really weird. But yeah, like even that, like taking an Uber is just so much easier than... Yeah, it's easier. But yeah, and, and here I'm enough of a Luddite. I've never taken an Uber. That's I've been so on cool. three taxis in my life. It's yeah. just, it's just, I, I'm... Maybe what it is, is if you wish to not enter the shadow world there are many other things that aren't immediately shadowy that you have to cut off as well so maybe in this day and age if you wish to be a luddite that mm -hmm. also requires you don't actually travel unless there's a funeral you know what i mean yeah. like there might be luxuries that don't directly connect to the iphone that you also have to cut out and mm. i i think that's probably what's going to be required here right I don't think people have adequately stopped to think about what technology has been doing to us. And I, I didn't mean to turn, to turn this into a technology rant. I think rant. I did, so but, it's okay. <laughs> but look, even in the, the 1950s, you can find all these people sounding warnings about how technology is either taking us away from natural human life, right? So if you think about the distributists, if you think about Father Vincent McNabb, if you think about uh, Father Conrad Pepler, these English Dominicans, they're very, very worried about this in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, right? So we're entering this artificial world that's cut off from the world that God created and the world where all of the significance of our lives is actually found, right? Mm. And so the world, the mechanized and the information world breeds civilizational atheism, it breeds nihilism. And the only way out of it is going to be through abnegation and through a kind of asceticism. But it, it's, the hope would be to recover those more primal things, those more primal significances, right? Starting with things like, hey, here's a family meal, right? The sharing of food together as a family and seeing each yeah. other in the face. That's a first step. Then what's the second step? What's the third step? Yeah. Right? These are acts of combat. These are acts of combat. Yeah. And again, little turn, a thousand little turning away. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm too impatient for the little turning aways. I'm far too idealistic, uh -huh. but then I uh, backtrack. Yeah. So I'm the kind of person who would throw my phone in a river and then two weeks later buy one. 
I've had that temptation. See, this is the benefit of being a melancholic. You think I all of these so, things. Are you melancholic? I, I'm melancholic. But, but yeah, me too. Uh, melancholic and phlegmatic. So I think <laughs> uh, all these things. I just don't do them, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, melancholic choleric. <laughs> exactly. So so that's that's the difference, right? So yeah. I can just sort of like retreat into my own little world of sort of like slothful. I don't know. It might <laughs> be prudence, wrath. though. It's Maybe, probably, it's prudence. Yeah. Maybe it's prudence. Maybe it's prudence. But. But the temptation to yeah, I shut the phone, watched, take uh, an axe to the TV, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, I, oh, I've, I have all these stories. So I, I once watched Brother, Son, Sister, Moon, that uh -huh. terrible St. Francis of Assisi movie. Was so inspired by it that I took all the clothes out of my closet, put into a backpack no. to walk down to the. This is like ten o'clock at night to take down to the bins that you drop the clothes in. Yeah. With my phone, I broke the battery. I threw my phone away. I threw all my clothes away. I think a month later, bought a phone, bought some new clothes. Were you already married at this point? No, no. Okay. I, no, no. But when like I was ex. married, <laughs> but see, when I was married, I was living in Ireland in Donegal and my wife and my son went back to Texas mm -hmm. and I was left alone. And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'd love to watch a season of The Simpsons. Like it's been so long since I watched television. I just really want to enjoy that. So I went, I rented The Simpsons. I came, I watched three episodes. I was so disgusted. I took the TV that wasn't mine. <laughs> I was renting it, ripped the cord out, threw it in the bin. So That's idealism amazing. without, no, it would have been amazing if there was follow through, but <laughs> oh, I'm pretty fair, sure fair. within a month, I just got another stupid TV. Ah. God have mercy on me, a sinner. But I, I yeah. long for that. I, mm -hmm. I long for something I can't seem to maintain. Yeah. No, and I, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's universal, right? We all recognize that there's something wrong. We all recognize that the rhythm of our life isn't what we want it to be, right? But there are very powerful interests who, who create mm. an environment conducive to living out of rhythm, right? So, yes. so you, you always feel that knee-jerk reaction against it. I should delete this. I should throw that out. I should do this, right? But then it's like, but, then you come back on hands and knees. Then you come back on hands and knees because yeah. it's like, well, but if I were to get rid of my Facebook, what what would I do with these thousands of photos? Because it's my it's my photo <laughs> That's cache, right? You know, yes. and so so. They have, yeah. but, but again, this is this is this is the ring, right? Because it's your present, it's your future, it's your past. Like the, your memory is colonized by all this, or my memory is anyway. So, what do you mean? I like that, but what do you mean? Your well, memory's colonized by it. So, all right, let's talk about how things were. Let's talk about how things are, right? So, think about visiting, you know, your great aunt and. 1995 or something mm -hmm. like this and she can take out the family photo album yes. and this is the most precious thing right this is when my parents would talk about what you would save from the house in a house fire you go get those family photos because that's your past and that's what really really matters to you right do you have a family photo album no i don't either right i have I, a bunch of little books that instagram helped me print uh, off I, I, the, the instagram or the whatever <laughs> but, yeah, I, exactly. but i wouldn't think to run to them in a fire because i have them somewhere else you got them you got them uploaded right so you'd grab something else but this is this is the thing right so our memories and our past are, I, this is somebody else's phrase, but they're sort of, we, we're we renting them. We don't own them anymore because... Oh, I'm going to go on an ideological bender after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. I apologize. No, let's do it. Let's are go. Say, I want to go there. Can you say the word renting them again, please? So for my own sake. Yeah. So we're <laughs> renting, we're renting our memories from Facebook, yeah. right? Because... I don't remember what I did 10 years ago, but oh, Facebook's going to remind me. And wasn't that a cute moment when my son was only so such and such old, right? We rent them. And the fact that they're immediately accessible means that they don't seep in the same way that they used to. Are you a sports guy? No. No? Okay, you're not. So this is this analogy. Like in Australia, fall flat. I watched but, cricket. I liked sports, but, I, it but it was more of a communal thing. More of a communal thing. When I was a kid, you know, you could ask people sports trivia and you'd know sports trivia. you know who led the mm -hmm. AL and batting average or something like this, right? I see what you get but, at. But, but now, now we, we know nothing. We uh, And not only do we know nothing, but as we converse about it, there's bound to be someone in the group who short circuits the pleasant conversation yep. we were having with a factoid that he looked up on Google. Yeah, or even, I mean, again, this is absolutely not a sports interview, but it was something surreal 10 years ago when I was watching sports purely communally with a group of friends, right? There were three or four or five who were following the game, but then there were another significant chunk who were on their smartphones the whole dang time yeah. because, hey, Here's uh, oh. here's my fantasy team. Here's this. Here's that. Right. And so even these most simple pleasures, communal pleasure of hanging out with friends and doing this, that they're sapped away and they're 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 drained. So it's almost literally as though our lives are being drained into our devices. Mm. So 
Yeah, so here's, here's the upcoming bender. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.